Welcome to Back to School webinar brought to you by European School Math Academy. My name is Jana Milenkovic and I'm the coordinator of European School Math Academy and I'll be your host today. I'm uh, very pleased to welcome my colleague Benjamin Hertz, Senior Pedagogical Manager at European School Math. He will be joining us later today to discuss peer assessment. And for you who are joining us for the first time, let me briefly introduce you European Schoolnet. So European Schoolnet is the network of European Ministries of Education based in Brussels. And our um, main aim is to bring innovation in teaching and learning to our main stakeholders, which of course include ministries of education, schools, teachers, researchers, industry partners, and so on. Now that we got our introductions, um, out of the way, I would like to introduce you to introduce yourself in the chat. You will see that we have live Q&A session going on, so feel free to say hello in the chat. Feel free to say where are you joining us from? Um, have you heard about European School Night Academy before we have it taken out of any of our courses? So don't be shy, feel free just to pop uh, in and say hello. And uh, just to keep you on your toes and keep you uh, uh, ready for the webinar. I would like you to uh, join me in this Mentimeter and answer one very simple question. So the way you can join the Mentimeter is either by going to menti.com and putting the coding, uh, uh, the voting code, which is 8007-4970, sorry or you can uh, directly scan the QR code that you see here, or on top there is a link that you can directly follow to answer the question. You will see that the question that we have um, for you there is about the continuous professional development, and if you have uh, had any obstacles in pursuing your professional development opportunities, uh, whether it is uh, online courses, MOOCs, webinars, workshop, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, feel free to choose more than one and I'm going to give you um, a couple of more minutes to answer the question and then we can see how you all voted. Right. The live results are loading. Let's see. Okay, it seems like that uh, most of you noted that um, uh, you uh, found that the schedule was your biggest uh, obstacle, that uh, the timing of these uh, uh, opportunities coincided with your work schedule. Some of you noted that uh, you find them to be too expensive and some of you reported that you haven't really had any um, issues. OK, great to hear uh, your answers and uh, you will see just in a second why I ask you this question. So uh, here I have um, a small table from uh, Talis report uh, on uh, report on teaching and learning uh, international survey and uh, uh, teachers and principals were asked exactly the same question to identify what were the main obstacles to pursuing uh, professional development opportunities. And uh, um, same as you, they also identified that the biggest obstacle to pursuing these opportunities was exactly conflict that they had with their uh, work schedule. They also find that they didn't have enough incentives to join these opportunities. They also find them too expensive, such as yourself. Um, they find maybe they didn't have adequate um, prerequisites to join uh, those opportunities. Um, or uh, yeah, they find that uh, uh, they couldn't really find anything relevant for their uh, teaching practice. Uh, so this report was published in uh, 2018, uh, but uh, European School Net already in 2014 actually recognized this need to scale up professional development opportunities for teachers and to help them um, tackle uh, all the growing challenges that they face in their classroom. 
um, as a response uh, to this need, the European Schoolnet Academy was born in 2014 and uh, therefore the European Schoolnet Academy is a platform that primarily open that primarily offers massive open online courses or MOOCs, which are entirely free of charge. They are open for anyone to join and there are no limits in uh, number of participants who can join. So you can see that already that um, we had in mind all of these um, obstacles or barriers that were reported just uh, now by you, but in general uh, by teachers and uh, principals when asked about their professional development as the courses are uh, free. So the obstacle of um, too expensive is uh, tackled. Uh, they are um, available on our platform. They are in a way self paced. Uh, so teachers can join and browse the content at their own convenience after work during the weekends, whenever they find it suitable for them to uh, attend our courses. Most of our courses only have a single deadline that uh, teachers have to meet, which is at the end of the course when they have to finish uh, their all their activities. Otherwise, uh, um, teachers and other participants, other uh, school staff who are attending our courses are of course free to uh, join the courses at their own free time. Um, we are trying to make courses accessible to anyone without any particular prerequisites. You will find at the landing pages of all our courses that we always recommend targeted audience. So we always recommend that the, who this course would uh, be best for, but we don't limit anyone uh, for joining our courses. They're open to anyone and there is no limit in terms of number of participants. So all that to say is that we are aware that teachers are busy. Hence, we do include this uh, self-paced model of courses. We know that uh, being teacher can be very isolating, uh, spending most of your day uh, maybe in a classroom uh, or in preparation of your work. So this is also a, a platform for uh, peer engagement and, and network. And we really want to create a place for teachers to come together, learn from each other, share their experiences, uh, and um, in a way also uh, get to uh, know how the situation is in different countries and learn that we are all uh, connected and uh, have similar struggles and uh, similar obstacles. So uh, by supporting each other, we can overcome them. Um, of course, uh, uh, being busy means that uh, you want to invest your time wisely if you uh, dedicate your time to a specific uh, professional development uh, opportunity. You want to make sure that you can get a very practical um, things out of it. So you will find that most of our courses are very resource uh, rich courses, meaning that we include a lot of uh, learning uh, scenarios, lesson plans, action plans, strategies and so on that you can uh, use in your classroom. You will have a lot of uh, ready to use resources and not just that, but as a main um, focus of our courses, you will also work on creating such a resource that you can then easily implement in your classroom. And lastly, we don't want your efforts to go to waste. So uh, you will get recognized by getting a badge and a certificate uh, from European Schoolnet Academy. So let's have a look uh, now. Uh, when I said that you, I know you're isolated, let's see who you can connect with in our courses. This is a map of all the uh, countries that our participants, uh, that we have had participants from, and this map is growing uh, each day. We have over 40,000 uh, registered users on European Schoolnet Academy, so you can imagine the diversity of um, participants in our courses from all over the country, from all over the world, different countries. So you can find always someone to connect, not just within your own country, but also all across Europe and beyond. Let me also take a moment uh, to briefly introduce uh, what type of content you may find in our courses. Uh, primarily the content that we offer is a high quality content and we offer a lot of video content that has been produced by teachers 
experts and students, and we always pride ourselves to have a content designed by teachers for teachers. I mentioned that you will be working on creating your own lesson plan, learning scenario, or any type of uh, other learning outcome, but you won't be alone in uh, doing so all throughout the uh, course or throughout, uh, throughout each module. You will be given plenty of examples uh, how to uh, fill out that uh, lesson plan, uh, and not just examples, but you will be given in detail uh, guidance on how to uh, develop your lesson plan and you will be introduced uh, to a different set of tools as well that can help you to uh, develop your lesson plans. Um, as we proud ourselves to be a platform that is uh, based on peer learning and sharing, of course, at core at all, all of our courses is our discussions. Uh, we have uh, different tools that we use to encourage you to participate in discussions, our uh, forum, um, through social media, different um, third party tools. I think uh, if you have uh, participated in any of our courses, you will be very familiar with Padlet board and so on and so forth. Of course, uh, we are aware that um, uh, the convenience of social media um, and accessibility plays a big role. So we also have dedicated uh, Facebook group for each of our course where you can also get together with course moderators, coordinators and with other course participants to exchange your experiences and uh, learn from each other yet again. Um, uh, additionally, you will find uh, different uh, resources. We really try to curate the best possible resources that are relevant and um, to the topic uh, that have been also tested by our teachers and proved uh, as useful. Uh, you will find different uh, articles, tools and, and so on. Uh, one of our most favorite uh, features are a live event. So similarly to the live event that we are having right now, all of our courses feature different webinars um, and uh, teach meet. I'm sure that you're already familiar with the concept of webinar, but what, let me uh, tell you a bit about teach meet. So teach meets are live event in which teachers from the course, so the course participants get to uh, have a role of presenter for the day. They get to share their uh, experiences related to the topic of the uh, MOOC, um, share a part of their maybe learning uh, scenario that they're preparing for the final activity or uh, already share uh, something in, uh, that relates to that topic. Um, usually they're very popular. The, a lot of um, course participants want to take this opportunity to practice public speaking uh, as well to share uh, their expertise and they're very popular uh, for uh, others to attend as they get a lot of interesting ideas and they really get inspired by what they hear um, during those uh, live events and the, the, then they can take it and implement it in their own classroom. And finally, our course's uh, final uh, assessment is a peer assessment, but I won't get too much into details about it. I will let uh, Ben discuss it with you uh, a bit later. Um, so um, then when it comes to our pedagogical approach to kind of just summarize what I already shared with you, our platform is a platform for uh, reflection, sharing experiences and learning from peers. It's also a platform for building your professional community for networking, as I already mentioned, with so many opportunities uh, to interact with your peers from all over the world. It's a great place for networking and expanding your professional community. Uh, the content that we present in our uh, MOOCs is there to stimulate reflection and uh, we start, uh, try to stay away from this uh, model of delivering teaching. Hence, our course instructor, coordinators and moderators are there to animate and moderate and not really to instruct uh, our course participants. And all our activities are designed for self-reflection, peer exchange, and the production of useful course product, as I already mentioned. So some type of lesson plan or something to that effect that then you can uh, use it in your everyday teaching practice. That's uh, our main goal, of course. 
And as I already mentioned, we want to award you for your uh, hard work and effort that you put uh, in our courses. So for uh, everybody who successfully complete our courses, which usually means who creates this learning outcome and provides um, meaningful and constructive review to their peers. Again, uh, Ben will uh, get into more details in um, a few minutes. Uh, so for, for all the course participants who managed to do that in before the course deadline, they will be awarded a course certificate. Here's an example of a course certificate and uh, maybe something that is even more important for teachers are these course badges that you can see an example um, uh, right uh, here. Uh, these badges can be exported to your Badger backpack and then they can be easily shared on social media, your uh, LinkedIn profiles, you can share them with your uh, peers uh, and with your bosses, of course, with your principals and headmasters. Um, so you can collect uh, badges from our courses and um, be proud of them, show them off. If at any point you have any questions for me or any comments, feel free to share them uh, in the chat. I, I hope that so far everything is clear, but if it's not, please at any moment just let me know and uh, we can get back to any of the points I made. When it comes to certification, I would also just like to bring your attention to a certification part within uh, each course uh, on the course landing page and also within the course to pay attention to accrediting institution. So if you come from one of the countries uh, of um, our uh, partners who offer a local certificate that uh, depending on the course, that could be for teachers from Portugal, Italy, Spain uh, um, or other countries, make sure to always uh, check it on the landing page or within the course certification tab uh, because you might have an opportunity to get your certificate, uh, certificate locally recognized. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, you have now a bit more clear idea about what type of courses uh, we offer in European Schoolnet Academy. This was just a short introductory overview or what type of content uh, you can find uh, over there. Uh, I would like to share with you right now some upcoming courses for autumn 2021. Uh, uh, that is, uh, our semester has just started, so you are on time to join any of our courses. So uh, let's have a look at our catalog. So this is our catalog at a glance and I will give a brief overview of each of the course right now. So the first course that we have on the list is the three R's and animal use in science. The course has already started. It started on September 13, but uh, don't worry, you are still well on time to join the course. Um, uh, the, this course uh, features a very specific topic and at the first glance it might sound that if you're not a science teacher that this topic maybe is not so relevant to you. So even though that uh, through this MOOC uh, students will get to uh, learn more about uh, welfare of animals and these uh, replacement methods, uh, and not just the replacement, but the, uh, the three hours in general, will, which in, entail replacement reduction and refinement of animal testing. But uh, more than that, uh, you will get to explore with your students uh, ethics, ethics in science, uh, debating, and uh, you will learn how to help your students develop critical thinking, which is something that I think in this day and age we find it increasingly important with everything that's been going on around the world. I think that the science literacy skills and uh, critical thinking skills are uh, very important and uh, they can be easily implemented in any subject, not maybe just a scientific subject. Uh, this course also um, features very interesting ICT tools. So for all the ICT teachers, uh, they will have a chance to 
play with this uh, 3D uh, labs, virtual labs, and uh, as a part of a replacement of animal uh, using uh, in testing. So um, check it out. The course is uh, open and running, but you are still on time and you still have plenty of time uh, to complete the course. One last thing is that uh, this course features learning scenarios for both primary and secondary school teachers. So if you think that this topic is maybe um, not so easily accessible to younger learners, uh, have a look at the um, learning scenario for primary teachers and see how is this topic addressed for younger learners. All right, let's go to our next course then. Our next course is starting on Monday, uh, so again, you're on time to enroll. Uh, you might be familiar with our series of courses um, brought to you by EU uh, Code Week. Uh, so this year, the EU Code Week online bootcamp uh, will help you introduce coding and programming in your classroom. Again, the way that the coding and programming is approached in uh, this course uh, doesn't require any particular digital skills and um, it doesn't really matter which subject you teach. The, there are plenty of examples of implementing coding and programming in many different subjects, uh, uh, approaching from many different uh, points. Another very interesting thing that I would like to highlight that in regards to this course is that the, for the first time um, on the European Schoolnet Academy, modeled by the Teacher Academy or Sister Academy approach, we are using blended learning approach. Um, unfortunately, this uh, blended learning approach is only limited this time, only limited to selected group of uh, teacher, so um, you cannot apply to be part of this um, pilot program now, but please stay tuned. And if this is something that you would like to see from us in the future, please uh, feel free to let us know or even post it down in the chat if this blended type of uh, uh, learning will interest you. Uh, basically, we will have a different study groups um, in different country that will get uh, together and um, uh, go through the course, uh, discuss the course, or maybe work on the course activities together. So we are very excited for it and we are very grateful for the EU Colleague Ambassadors to take uh, on this task. Um, and again, uh, if this is something that will interest you, please let us know and we will see how we can uh, facilitate this on a larger scale for our future courses. And lastly, for this semester, we have the integrated STEM teaching for primary school, and we also have integrated uh, STEM teaching for secondary school. Both of these uh, courses are reruns of the courses that we had last year with slightly um, uh, improved uh, content. Uh, in both of these uh, courses, you will find resources for primary or secondary school teachers on how to uh, uh, use them in an integrated uh, approach compared to teaching uh, each subject individually. As we all know, the world is a very complex place and looking at um, problems such as uh, sustainability from just a single angle would not bring solution to that such a complex uh, issue. So we really have to look at it from uh, various angles and uh, help students contextualize their knowledge that they have from one subject in the other. Um, another special feature that we have in this MOOC is that uh, you will be asked to work in teams because we really want to uh, emphasize this in, in integration and inter-subject cooperation. So uh, you're free to join teams with uh, other teachers from your school in case that you are the only teacher joining uh, this uh, MOOC from your school. Uh, you can then join one of the teams that uh, we have uh, within the course. Uh, there is a designated spot for uh, you to uh, come together and discuss with your teammates on how to proceed with your uh, learning scenario and how to choose a good subject that is applicable to all the subjects uh, that uh, all of you are teaching. Um, these two courses are starting on the 25th of October. Um, uh, they are reruns, so if you 
have attended a STEM is everywhere course last year um, or in its original run in uh, 2018. If you have a certificate from that course and you complete uh, one of the integrated STEM teaching uh, courses, you will be eligible for a super certificate. Uh, so if you're interested in getting this special STEM certificate and you already have one from STEM is everywhere, make sure to enroll in the course and give uh, this certificate a try as well. Um, so that is this for uh, this semester. Uh, if you want to know more about our upcoming courses about uh, next semester, or if you want to uh, get even more uh, resources, lesson plans, or trips and uh, tricks and uh, um, on how to uh, join our courses and how to get most of our courses, make sure that you hop on to our blogs. It's European School Net Academy blog, and you can find more information uh, and more resources. Uh, they're including this um, catalog that I just share with you and we will of course be posting all our future uh, catalogs over there. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed uh, this. Um, uh, uh, that you enjoyed this uh, short presentation uh, about our courses and about our platform. Uh, but before I uh, ask my colleague Ben to discuss with you the peer assessment, I would uh, like to give a big thanks to two of our teachers, Anita and Anna, who have submitted some video testimonials for us. So again, as we proud ourselves to be a platform uh, from teachers to teachers, here is something from the teachers on why you should join our courses. So let's hear it from uh, our Anna and Anita. Hi, my name is Anita Shimac. I teach mathematics in a lower secondary school in Croatia. I joined the European Schoolnet Academy in 2016. At the time, I was looking for an inspirational hub of resources, somewhere I could learn, discover, be inspired and develop my teaching. I also wanted to meet colleagues who were experienced and motivated, who are willing to share their ideas and who are looking for partnerships with like-minded individuals. EUN ticked all of these boxes and much more. I loved all the courses I initially enrolled in. They were all STEM based, but I soon discovered there were so many others that could complement and inspire my teaching. That year, I became a scientist ambassador for Croatia and my enthusiasm for the MOOCs EUN offered increased. To date, I have participated in and finished over 20 courses that range from STEM to coding, hacking hate, animal research, exploring nature-based solutions, history, citizen science, and even space. All of these have helped me become a better teacher by broadening my range of expertise widening my perspective on the connection between my classroom and the world outside and connecting with colleagues from all over Europe, getting feedback from peers, discussing the various pedagogical uses of technology in education has inspired me to continue my learning. For all of these reasons and many more, I would recommend the EUN to all of my colleagues, no matter what subject or age group they teach, there is something for everyone. My suggestions for improvement are to include more diversified MOOCs, organise more virtual events and include podcasts on a regular basis. Other than that, I'm very happy with the platform, the moderators and the entire EUN team. If you're looking to develop your professional skills, learn and share knowledge in order to lead your students in the challenges of the 21st century, come and join European Schoolnet Academy team. Here, teachers and anyone interested in education of future generations work to innovate in the classroom by transporting today's students to tomorrow's future. Here, you can find an international and multidisciplinary collection of educational resources, ideas, partners and many reasons to motivate your students towards meaningful learning. With a strong focus on collaborative work between the various actors in the educational field, the MOOCs 
developed by European Schoolnet promote new teaching methodologies and new educational resources ready to use in your classroom. What can you find in the MOOC? Lots of things. Videos and written materials explaining how to implement learning scenarios, web tools and applications ready to use, experts talking about the work they do in different fields, teachers showing how they create learning scenarios and how to implement them, different applications where you can express yourself and share doubts and knowledge, peer assessment reviews of your learning scenarios, basically an interactive community built to help teachers in their practice. With the advantage of being completely free and granting the right certification for each country. I have been attending these mocks for some years now and since 2016 I have been privileged to collaborate in several European projects promoted by European Schoolnet Academy, which allows me to always be close to the latest innovations and guidelines issued by the European Commission. I strongly recommend everyone actively to participate in these mocks. The learning community that is created in each one of them is always open to new ideas and helping everyone on their path as educators. Finally, like all of us, European Schoolnet also learns from everyone who participates, encouraging you to share your point of view and your ideas to improve the work done so far. So, if you like challenges and constantly overcome yourself, join this fantastic team. Well, I just really want to say a massive thank you to Anita and Anna. Their words are truly inspiring for us and uh, we are humbled to uh, hear such a kind words from two of them. But at the same time, we are really inspired to keep working hard to uh, better our courses and uh, to listen to our teachers and deliver best possible professional development opportunity that we can. Um, I don't think I can top anything that An Anita and Anna said, so I think I'm going to uh, end here, but I'm going to invite my colleague Ben to join us now. Uh, ben, I hope you're ready. Yes, so ready I'm here. Excellent. Um, so the stage is yours. Great, many thanks, um, Jana, and thanks for organizing this. Um, glad to be here. Um, yeah, so um, what I want to do today is talk a bit about um, peer assessment on our courses. Um, peer assessment is really one of the, um, well, probably most complex activities you'll find on our courses, and, and some might argue also a bit contentious, in fact. So we wanted to take a bit of time to just uh, briefly talk a bit more about this and share with you some research insights and some of our own insights and explain a bit why we, why we are using peer assessment as an assessment method on our courses. Um, so let me share also a few slides with you. Uh, Okay. Okay. So, uh, peer assessment on our courses. Um, very quick talk about this, but I do want a bit of your input as well. Um, first, to get a quick understanding about um, well, what is your experience actually with this? Are you completely new? Have you participated in many of our courses, uh, or have you participated in peer assessment um, with fellow teachers or colleagues? in another context. Um, possibly, hopefully, many of you have used peer assessment already with your students. Um, assuming that you're teachers working in schools, um, you, you, you probably have used in some formal way peer assessment with your students. But peer assessment in a teacher training context, so where teachers peer assess each other, is, is still not so common. It's actually quite rare. Um, so I'd like to get a quick understanding of um, those colleagues who are on this course, um, uh, sorry, on this webinar. Um, yeah, 
what's your experience with this? So I'm just going to quickly switch to the results. Let's see. Let's see. Let's. Uh, I think you should see it. Um, well, let's wait a second to see if we can get some further results in. OK. Next here. Any further responses coming in? OK, well, um, a good mix here. Um, if you've participated in peer assessment with um, some teachers or other colleagues, then um, um, well, you have a bit of an idea of maybe some of the dynamics involved in this. Um, and pr probably, hopefully, if you actually participated in peer assessment in one of our courses in the past, then um, well, you'll know in particular maybe of well, what it what the benefits of participating in it, but also what the challenges are. And I want to talk a bit about that uh, in a bit more detail. Um, so why do we use peer assessment? Um, well, if we think about MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, um, there's really not so many ways how assessments can be organized. Assessment, if we consider it as a form of validation of the learning that has happened on a course. Um, if you go to some of the big MOOC platforms like Coursera or edX, um, many of the courses there use uh, multiple choice tests. Um, and they can be quite rigorous, um, but using those um, for a substantive product like a lesson plan or an essay is of course not really possible. So what we revert to in MOOCs um, for assessment purpose is peer assessment, because if there are hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people on a course, it's really impossible for an instructor to mark all that work. Um, so to a certain extent, it's out of necessity, but um, what we know from research and what we know also from our own experience is that there are significant de significant benefits to using peer assessment. So there's four main reasons why we use um, peer assessment on our courses. On the one hand, to support learning regarding the topic of, le that of, of learning. So um, it, it's in a way assessment for learning. So by participating in this assessment process, you learn about the, the, the topic at hand. Um, the second point is to support learning regarding the process of assessment. Now, peer assessment is a very effective assessment technique that you can also use with your students. So by participating in a peer assessment on our courses, you learn about that assessment mechanism by, by being the learner on the, sort of on the other side of that spectrum, not the teacher, um, you learn about the dynamics involved and hopefully that can help you when you organize peer assessment with your students or might introduce you to the idea of actually using peer assessment with your students. The third um, area, and this is the one that I mentioned in the previous slide, is really to validate and evaluate the learning that has happened. So to understand, have you learned something as you went through this course or what have you taken from this course and turn that into a learning process? Um, and that's the mechanism that we can use to, to do that. Uh, and then the fourth part, um, which um, Jan has already touched upon, um, is really a core element of all of our courses to establish a community of professionals. And by giving you the opportunity to sit really at an equal level with each other and to look at each other's work and to give each other feedback, um, give that sense of being part of a community of professionals and being able to help your peers uh, and being able to also benefit from your peers. And I think that that's a really core element of the peer assessment process. Um, if we look at what research says about peer assessment, there is um, um, actually, well, there's a ton of research available that looks at peer assessment with students. So be that at primary level, secondary level, or at uh, higher education university level. And um, we can see there from all those, um, all those studies that have been conducted with that audience that um, peer assessment has a consistently moderate positive effect on learning outcomes. So it is an effective assessment method um, or is an effective assess assessment for learning method. Um, and interestingly enough, it is similarly effective to assessment by teachers. So if the instructor on a course marks the work of a student, that is similarly effective to if it is marked by peers. And we'll look at that in a moment in a bit more detail. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, effects are similar across primary, secondary and higher education. Um, there is some evidence to suggest that if you organize peer assessment with students in an online context, it has a stronger effect than if 
the organizer in a face to face context. Um, and I think also a very interesting finding um, that's very important for also the course design or the assessment design itself is that psycholo psychological safety and trust are important for peer assessment to work. So you do need to have a sense of community already in place um, before you can actually embark on such an assessment. Now, if we look at peer assessment, what the research tells us about peer assessment between teachers, so in teacher training, well, first of all, there's not much research out there. It's not, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's not being done a lot uh, as of yet. Um, and then more than that, uh, when it has been done, it hasn't been researched substantively um, as of yet. So there are uh, studies done on this, but um, usually their research design is very limited um, or their scope is very, very specific. Um, but based on those studies, we can say the following things. Um, we can say that, again, there seems to be a positive effect, effect on learning outcomes and I'm a bit more careful here in saying there is evidence for that. There is some a limited evidence for it, but we can't really say this conclusively. Um, what's really important, and this is something to reflect about as you embark on the peer assessment process, is that your beliefs um, about how teaching and learning works affect the impact of teacher peer assessment. So if you have a more constructivist learning view, then you tend to benefit more from the process of peer assessment. Um, <clears throat> what's also interesting, and we'll come back to in a moment, is that teacher peer assessment um, seems to impact more via the process of giving feedback than receiving feedback. And that's confirmed by, by many of our participants, in fact. Um, <clears throat> Now, where, where there's no evidence as of yet is uh, that there's a link between par participating in teacher peer assessment and that then also improving teaching practices. So that area, that point or the rationale that we are using in, 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 in for our courses that you learn about peer assessment, there's no evidence as of yet that you are using that experience and then going to the classroom and using peer assessment in an effective manner. And OK, that's, of course, um, sort of also quite difficult to 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 provide evidence for, but there haven't been substantial studies on that yet. Uh, and those studies that have been done on it don't provide sufficient evidence to support this claim. That just as a bit of a backdrop, but let's explore some of these questions in a bit more detail. Um, and just to say why, just to say a quick word, why why I'm looking at these or why we are looking at these questions. As I mentioned, peer assessment is a complex process. Um, it requires a lot of time of our participants, um, and it's sometimes not unproblematic because um, participants feel it's unfair or they're frustrated by the feedback that they get. Um, so. We, we acknowledge that and we always try to respond to those concerns, um, but we stick to the peer, this peer assessment process, not just because it's one of the, um, the few ways that we can validate learning on our MOOCs, but also because there is um, uh, some evidence available that supports the idea it is a very effective form of assessment. And I want to share with you a few results from um, um, a study done with a limited number of um, teachers, um, 73 teachers who participated on courses on the European School Net Academy. Um, and on those course, on the course that this, this applied to, there was actually um, expert or a small number of participants received um, an expert assessment. So the instructor gave feedback um, and a score to the work of the participants. And then there was also the peer assessment. So we had both in parallel, instructor assessment and peer assessment. And we wanted to understand, well, are they equally effective? What are the differences? And um, you can see here um, the, the um, orange um, bars are the scores from one to four given by the experts and the blue bars are the scores given from one to four by the peers. And uh, on the left hand side, um, you can see the eight different categories where the scores were given. And what you can see here is that um, there are differences. Um, the instructor tend to give a lower uh, score than the peers, but overall the differences are actually not very large. I mean, they are all still in the range of sort of 3.5, maybe a bit below 3.5 for the instructors or experts and above 3.5 for the peers. So yes, instructors slash experts might be a bit more critical in their assessment, um, 
but overall there isn't a huge difference. So it's not that we are seeing that the instructors are giving ones and twos while the peers are giving threes and fours. Um, yes, and the other thing I think what's worth mentioning here is that the variability of scores is higher among instructors than among peers. Um, that might be also down to the fact that we have a lot more data coming from peers from, than from instructors, but um, overall it's um, definitely important to take into account. And it also flags up the point that actually um, um, instructor assessment, uh, if, you, if you give one uh, instructor an assessment uh, or, or, or a piece of work to assess, and it gives the same piece of work to another instructor, they might come to quite different results actually as part of that. So that's, um, um, yeah, that's also the case between instructors, not just between peers. Um, very quick word about um, the um, qualitative comments that are given. So in our, in our assessments, you have to give a score and different categories and also give some qualitative feedback. So write a few sentences uh, with some ideas or highlighting specific issues maybe. Um, and you can do you do see some differences here. For example, the length of feedback um, peers give less detailed feedback than experts. It's not surprising because while well, the instructors are paid for this job, the peers are not, um, etc. Um, the tone of the feedback is overall quite similar. Um, peers tend to be slightly more positive than the instructors or experts. Um, and in regards to the uh, the level of how constructive their the feedback is, there's not a huge difference here. Um, but of course. Maybe unsurprisingly, you, we can say that um, the instructor slash expert feedback is a bit more constructive than the peer. Again, not so surprising, but again, showing that there aren't too big differences between these two types of assessment. Um, <clears throat> now, well, what do our participants say about this? Um, do they feel that it works for them or do they feel that it's problematic for them? Overall, we can say that it seems to work very well for them. You can see here um, data from uh, 2020 um, where almost, well, where more than 90% um, identify the final peer review activity, which is the peer assessment activity, as, um, as very useful or at least useful for their learning. Um, and it actually gets a higher rating than many of the other activities, for example, in using the Padlets, etc., which is just below 90%. Um, slightly lower than the content and the structure of the course um, for the purposes of learning, etc., but um, very high. Um, and you can see that at a more granular level also reflected in this data, which comes from a, a set, another project that we ran um, with some of our courses. Uh, and this shows you again the um, level of usefulness that the participants attributed to um, an instructor assessment. In this case, it's called external evaluator or peer assessment. And you can see that overall the external evaluator or the instructor assessment is perceived more useful. The, the, the gray bar at the right at the top, very useful, is at 72%. So it's, um, it's much higher than for uh, my lesson plan being assessed by peers. Um, but if you combine overall useful and very useful, actually the differences become marginal. They're not too different. What's interesting here, however, to note, and I've hinted upon this already before, is that assessing the lesson of my peers, that 65% of the participants in this study, um, which were around 100 participants in our courses, uh, found this very useful and at least another 26% overall useful. So um, <clears throat> again, there's quite a bit of evidence here to show that this seems to work very well for um, the participants. And I should add that the participants that were responding here to the survey were randomly selected. Um, so while not completely representative of the full population on our courses, full teacher population on our courses, um, there is a level of um, representativeness here. Um, <clears throat> OK, um, having said that, of course, there are not um, uh, uh, these work, but I've mentioned already there are some challenges. So I just quickly want to raise the question um, again to you. Uh, what are the main challenges of using peer assessment in teacher training MOOCs? Um, some of you have already participated in this type of peer assessment, maybe not in a teacher training MOOC, um, but uh, maybe in another context. Where do you think um, are the main challenges? 
Uh, let's hear briefly your feedback on this. Um, and I think I need to move to the next slide for that for you to be able to answer. So let's see if some responses are coming in. Okay, we have a first response. Some teachers don't know how to give useful feedback. Some teachers do not take it seriously. Yes, absolutely. Let's wait a bit longer to see if there's more responses coming in. If that's definitely it's if that's the main challenge, some teachers do not know how to give useful feedback. That's um, in a way good, uh, a good challenge because that's something that we can address um, and something we've been trying to address. Um, it's definitely something that we're aware of on the European School and Academy. That's why we try to provide uh, a series of resources that the teachers, um, that the participants can use, um, some examples of how to give feedback, good practices of giving feedback, um, etc. I don't see any further responses coming in, so I'm going to switch back um, to the presentation and just quickly compare this to um, um, some results we gathered from our evaluation surveys. Um, <clears throat> so here you can see um, the 2020 data from sort of the requests and complaints concerning the final peer assessment activity. Now, these percentages do not show the percentage of our participants. These show the percentages of the um, in a way, messages that we receive um, about the peer assessments, the comments we receive about the peer assessment. So 13% of those to a certain, uh, in, in some way, deal with an inappropriate review. Um, so there is, there can be an issue here. Um, if, the, if, the, um, if the teachers who are giving each other feedback do not um, give each other appropriate feedback, maybe they just say, um, yeah, this looks great, um, but don't provide any concrete um, examples of how to improve it. Um, and again, as I've said, we can we try to accommodate that with a, a series of resources um, that we try to, um, well, give good examples and um, give guidance on how to do this. On top of that, um, we also always conduct um, spot checks to, to see if um, um, some, if an inappropriate review has been given and if we find in those spot checks um, a case such as this, then um, we follow up accordingly, which can result in um, a participant who's done this inappropriate review to sort of not getting the, the certificate on a course. But of course, we always first investigate that and we um, give everybody an opportunity to, 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 to do a review again. Because if it's the case, what um, um, you have just said in the in the menti that um, maybe just more support and more examples are needed in how to actually write a review. Um, other things um, that are um, flagged up here is um, that uh, well, um, it takes a lot of time, uh, unclear instructions, which is definitely something that we take on board and we 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 can further improve and work on. Um, uh, too difficult, um, yes. Um, I mean, that's not something we can really address, but we maintain uh, it's important that there is also that level of um, complexity as part of these courses. Um, yeah, so let me finish then with giving you um, just a few specific tips for your next peer assessment on the Academy. Uh, first thing is um, make sure that uh, you think of the whole process as a learning activity. That's not just the process of um, submitting your, uh, your your piece of work uh, and then giving getting some feedback, but also the process of looking other, at other people's work and considering how can I give feedback to them. That's a really core cool part of the learning process. Um, on all our courses, we, we provide a rubric of sorts. Make sure to use that rubric, not just when doing the giving feedback to your peers, but also when preparing your own submission. This can guide you in the process of understanding what is required. So make sure you, you use that right from the start. Um, think about what information might be useful to a reviewer when preparing your own submission. And think a bit ahead when you work, when you prepare your own submission, give a bit of context, for example. Um, what's the class size? What type of students do you have? And that can help 
um, a, a reviewer, your peer, to give you maybe more valuable feedback. And then when reviewing your peers' work, well, link to what I've just said, be aware of the context and try to take into account any information that you have on, on the context. Keep it short but effective. Um, think about the language that you use, uh, language being very important. Um, make sure to use um, precise language, um, uh, not uh, try to avoid ambiguous words, um, etc. Focus on the strengths. Um, we are not here to judge anybody, and that's definitely not the purpose of the review process, of the assessment process. Um, be specific about areas of improvement uh, and give concrete examples. Um, so offer practical suggestions of how things can be improved um, and feel free to also give examples from your own practice. Um, I'm sure it's something when you give feedback will remind you of your own practice or when you look at the, your, your peers work will remind you of your own practice. So share those examples. It's about that exchange. And then of course, always be positive and friendly. We're all in this together. And final point, um, make sure to also use the reporting functions. Um, there is the opportunity if you receive a piece of work that you feel is um, um, really not up to standards, or if you receive uh, the feedback from a peer or a score from a peer that is really not fair, there are reporting functions on the platform, make sure to use them. Um, this is not about then snitching on your peer, this is about making sure that this process works and we then have a basis to investigate further. And we are very sensitive about this and we give everybody another opportunity, um, but it's at the same time important to also be fair and to make sure that the process works. And that's one of the mechan mechanisms that we have to do that. And for that, we, we rely to a significant extent on you who participate in that process. OK, well, I hope that's given you a bit of a sense of um, where things stand, why we use peer assessment on our courses, um, what the evidence is, um, and maybe some useful tips and tricks as you embark on your next peer assessment on the Academy. I'll leave it at that. Many thanks. And um, yeah, back to you, Jana. Thank you very much. Uh, ben. This was uh, very useful, not just for joining peer assessment in our courses, but I think they will find it useful for using peer assessment with their students or in any other context. And uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing uh, those tips and tricks. Uh, I think they will uh, definitely find them useful when doing peer assessment next time. Don't forget, as Ben already mentioned, we do have a designated section within uh, in every um, course, uh, you can find a designated session, uh, section about uh, peer assessment, uh, in particular about how to give constructive feedback. Um, so I think... Yelena, just um, to quickly point out, I think um, you're not live, your, your video is not live, so I think um, oh, everybody's still seeing see. me, so just to flag that up. Okay. Sorry about that, Ben, then. Uh, hope you don't mind. So I don't know, that's fine. That's fine. I just, uh, just want to say that it might okay. be a bit weird uh, <laughs> to hear you speaking, but yes. to see me. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Hopefully you can see me now. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that um, our time is up uh, today. Um, if you have any uh, questions or suggestions, if you'd like us uh, to do this again, if you have any suggestion for future topics to be discussed, if you want to as to highlight any other features uh, within our courses, please do let us know. You can reach us um, via academy at eun.org. And of course, make sure that you visit uh, our website, europeanschoolnetacademy.eu. Uh, join our courses. A uh, massive thank you to Ben for this uh, very insightful presentation. Um, and a uh, massive thank you to Diana Bo. You didn't even see her, she's in the background doing technical support. And of course, a uh, huge thank you to all of you for taking time of your day to join us today. I hope you found this uh, useful and I will see you uh, at the Academy in our upcoming courses. Have a good evening and bye. <laughs>